guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is vampire related, no one is surprised, but it's going to be talking about a show that I honestly love that not a lot of people talk about. So we're going to talk about it today. There is a show from the 90s called Forever Night. It ran from 1992 to 1996. It is a vampire detective TV show. This is not the first or last show that has done a similar storyline to this. I mean, you got Blood Ties. You got Moonlight. You got Vampire Detective. Vampire Prosecutor. Like, in English, in Korean, in all over the place, there are many storylines where there is a vampire cop, vampire detective, vampire who works with law enforcement. This show is campy as all hell. can be cringe at times, but honestly, it's got some really cool moments. It's really well done for the 90s. There's a really cool car in the show. That's all that matters. The car is beautiful. Has fins. But this show is based on a movie. There was a movie that came out in 1989 called Nick Knight. Nicholas Knight is a detective who works the night shift for the police department, and he solves crimes using, you know, his vampire abilities. He's also trying to become human. A coroner is trying to help him become human by drinking less blood, trying to eat food, going and getting a tan in a tanning bed, whatever it may be. The show has the same basic premise as it is based on the movie. But there is something that I noticed. The show went on for three seasons. The first two episodes of the show are completely based on the movie. Now, I noticed this recently because I watched the movie. I had never watched it before. I watched the movie and I noticed a few things where I was like, that seems familiar. Then I watched the first two episodes of the TV show and realized why I thought it seemed so familiar. And that is because it's almost the exact same script I'm not joking, it's basically the same exact thing, except split into two episodes rather than an hour and 30 minute movie, which is interesting. So today I thought I would point out those moments, the few areas where the lines are exactly the same, and talk about it, shall we? The movie has this cast within these roles. Rick Springfield as Nick Knight, Michael Nader as LaCroix, Robert Harper as Dr. Jack Britton. Detective Don Skanky, played by John Kapalos. The TV show, in these exact same roles, has this cast as those characters. Nick Knight is played by Drunt Wynn Davies. LaCroix is played by Nigel Bennett. The Corner, Natalie Lambert, is played by Catherine Disher. And Detective Don Skanky is played by John Kapalos. The character, Donald Skanky, is played by the same actor in the movie and the TV show. And I bet he thought it was very odd, or maybe he didn't, where he had to repeat the same script from the movie in the show. There are a few moments within the show that are different, but the majority of the script for the first two episodes of Forever Night are the exact same script as it was for the movie. They basically adapted the movie into two episodes for the show. After that, it becomes dramatically different, and it, you know, extends their characters, their backstories, whatever it may be, as the movie is just a movie. They only had enough content to split it into two episodes. Now, there are things throughout the episodes that are not in the movie because they're trying to build character development, obviously, because it's a show, but there are moments that are exactly the same word for word. So, the first moment that comes to mind is, happens in episode one of the TV show, and it's where Nicholas almost bites a curator at a museum and is basically in the dark of his apartment. He's like, he has a bottle in his hand full of blood, and the coroner comes to check on him. And the scene plays out almost identically between the movie and the TV show. Everything I do is wasted when you drink this stuff. It's the blood that keeps you from coming over. I am what I am. And I don't think Betty Ford takes vampires. Everything I do for you, everything that can help you regain your mortality is wasted when you drink this stuff. It is the blood that keeps you from coming over. I am what I am. And I don't think Betty Ford takes vampires. I'm repaying my debt. I caught a killer tonight. And you couldn't have caught him without the vampire. Who cares how I did it? You do. I caught a killer tonight. I'm paying my debt. Oh, and you couldn't have caught him without the vampire? Who cares how I did it? You do. What happened last night? I kissed her. And 
then I nearly killed her. What happened last night? I kissed her. And? And then I nearly killed her. So, there are differences, but there are similarities as well. Another scene that is very similar is when Skanky, awesome last name, crashes Nick's car because someone cuts the brake lines. They swerve across the road, crash into a few things, car breaks down. Now this scene happens right after the car breaks down and they take it to the repair place and the repair guy's like, yeah, got some problems. Like there's so much wrong with this car. It, you're gonna have to find a miracle, a car in the junkyard. Like I'm not gonna be able to fix this. And Nick was in the trunk the entire time for this entire scene of them crashing the car and being taken to the repair place. So he pulls himself out of the car and yells at Skanky. And these are two separate cars. The car in the movie and the car in the TV show are different cars, but they're both beautiful cars. They're both beautiful cars. But the scene plays out almost identical to each other. Oh man, oh man, oh man, he's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill me. Worse still, he's gonna make me pay for it. And oh man, oh man, he is gonna kill me. Worse still, he's gonna make me pay for it. Skanky. I'm dead. Honest to God, I, I was on my way back to the station, but the hospital's on its way, so I said, why not? I might as well just go to... This kills me now. It kills me more than it kills you. Skanky. Honest to God, Nick. I was only gonna drive it to the station, but the hospital was on its way, and I, and I said, why not? This kills me. This kills me more than it kills you. Now, the characters throughout the movie and the show do look different. The coroner in the movie is a guy named Jack. The coroner in the TV show is uh, a woman named Natalie, which helps differ them in certain ways due to the script being identical. Nick in the movie and Nick in the show have different hair colors. They speak differently. Of course, it's the same character, but it, they portray the lines in a different tone in certain moments. It's very seductive. The idea of never dying. Never being able to love someone. Is that seductive? It's very seductive, isn't it? The idea of never dying. Yeah. And never being able to be in love. Is that seductive? There are things I like about the movie more than the things I like about the show. Certain actors, certain ways scenes are portrayed, this and that. I love the Nick and Natalie from the TV show. Skanky's the same in both, so I like his character. I like the museum curator in the movie more than I like the museum curator in the TV show. I like La Croix in the movie more than I like the La Croix from the TV show. Now the La Croix from the TV show, I love his voice. For a vampire or a mortal to possess another totally is to destroy them. They cease to exist. He's very creepy. He's good at what he does. I just don't like the vibe, the look. I like the look of the movie one. If you could combine them, perfect La Croix. But there are things I like about each that I enjoy. And it basically ends with a battle where Nick's apartment's on fire. Nick's with Elise, who is the museum curator, and Lacroix's on the other side of the fire. Nick is weak because he hasn't fed because he's trying to become human. He's drinking less blood. And so Lacroix's trying to peer pressure him into biting Elise, turning her, bringing her across, as they say, and turning her into a vampire. In both the movie and the show, he refuses. I can't kill you. I'll make me immortal. It will kill you, Elise. Or make me immortal. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. I do. Listen to her. You don't know what you're saying. I do. Listen to her. Take me. Take me. Do it. No! like about the TV show version is they actually have a flashback to the first person he ever bit. Right after becoming a vampire, Lacroix and Jeannette, which I haven't talked about, who's the one who wanted Nicholas to be turned, but then Lacroix turned him, which I'm like, why couldn't Jeannette have done it? They bring him to a girl who's laying on a table and he feeds from her. This is the first person he's ever 
fed on right after becoming a vampire. So while he's resisting to bite Elise, the flashback is playing in between an inner cuts. This is not included in the movie, as it's the movie. In the show, they're trying to add more depth to the characters, so they're adding more to it. After they refuse to bite Elise, they jump through fire and fight with LaCroix. Both fights are a little bit different, but it both ends with Elise being bitten by LaCroix. The show version goes a little longer, at least like faints a few times, like falls into his arms and he bites her. In the movie, he she basically runs into him and he bites her right away. And just... <laughs> After he kills Elise, Nick, pissed off, grabs a stick on fire and stabs LaCroix with it. Now in the show, Nicholas speaks some French, I believe, uh, or Latin, or I don't know what language it is, <laughs> but he uh, says something and then stabs him and then shoves him into a wall. The movie version has 80s effects, which I've always liked. One of the reasons I like Fright Night and Lost Boys is the special effects. He stabs LaCroix, and it looks like it's literally in his no-no square as he's flying backward and then he melts like an 80s character would melt. other moments that I did not talk about. Those are just a few of the specific ones that I noticed that are exactly the same. There are probably a few other moments that are identical as the script is basically the exact same. I did notice a few differences between the script in the show and the movie. There are moments that are just a tad different. When he's about to bite Elise, there's a flashback when there isn't one in the movie. Their cars are different. The characters look a little different. Some genders are changed as well. So it's the same, but not. They changed just enough of it, probably to get away with it, because it's almost identical. If you have seen Forever Night and did not know that it's an exact copy of the movie, watch the movie and I think you'll know. If you have not heard of either of these, which is quite common because it was a 90s TV show and it wasn't like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which came out after this show, it wasn't the most popular show. But it's really good. If you like campy vampire detective style shows, very good. It's a little cringy at times, but honestly, very entertaining. I've watched every single episode, I own them all on DVD, and I don't regret it. It's honestly one of my favorite shows. Supernatural and Teen Wolf, totally the top. But Forever Night, probably third, or close to it. So, I highly recommend watching the movie and then watching the TV show. And then see how similar those scripts are. Because they are very similar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back again on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday and Monday with whatever I decide to post. Alright guys, I'll see you later.